Lapping, Jim, it's an interesting word. Now think about it. Toolmakers know what lapping is, but there's your dog does lapping. Doesn't your dog do lapping? If the dog sits on your lap or your baby sits on your lap? Or what if they're licking water? Is that lapping? I don't think so. I don't know. But anyway, lapping is an interesting word. We did a primer earlier on, on lapping. We showed you some of the external and internal laps, and we're going to review that again. This time, we're going to show you in the plant how we do some lapping for both external and internal. I can't emphasize enough how easy this is if you set it up right. If you don't, you're going to have a problem and you're not going to like it. It's going to be frustrating. It's going to lock up on you. It's going to seize. It won't work right. So it's important that you get it set up properly. This is a part that we've already lapped, but we're going to take another one back there and we're going to show you how we lap it. But look at the difference. If you look at this difference, and if you can get a good shot of that, Jim, this has been ground, this has been lapped. What a difference in the finish. It almost, the lap finish looks like chrome. And it's not chrome, folks. This is 8620. It's, uh, it's not a special steel. So that's what it looks like when it's lapped. We're also going to lap an ID, and we're going to fit it to one of these minor diameters. Again, this is the lap for an ID. An expandable lap made by American Lab has a helix in it, so and this arbor is tapered. So when you tap it, it expands. So as it wears, you just add a little, you tap it a little more, and it expands again, and you keep on lapping with it. It's important you go all the way to the end so you don't wear it in the middle. So you gotta go all the way 50% off, 50% off, back and forth till you get it where you want it. One other thing. The compound that you use, that's important. If you use 400, let's say, and, and keep in mind the compound's like sandpaper, 400, 600, 800, 1,000, 1,200. It's just like sandpaper. If you use a 400, it's gonna be very difficult to clean the lap and go to 1,200. It's not gonna be an easy thing to do. You need to take spirits and wash it out really good. And even with that, some of it gets impregnated in the lap. So if you're trying to get a finish like this, this was a finish that we did using 1200 only. What we've done is on the external laps, if, I don't know if you can see that, but we marked this fine. So we would not contaminate this lap with anything other than a 1200 compound. If we're going to use 400, we're going to use a different lap, certainly a different insert. We can pop that insert out and put this in, but generally we just use a different holder so we don't have to waste time doing that. And again, the beauty of this, that lap wears out, you tighten it down here, and it contracts. That's why all these little slits are in here for so it'll contract evenly. That plus the helix in here allows it to contract evenly. So we're going to go in the back. We're going to show you how to do lapping on an OD and lapping on an ID. So let's head in the back. We're going to show you how we're going to do it. Let's go, Jim. We're back at the old Logan lathe. Remember that? We did have that in one of the other videos and we started to show you about, uh, I think we called it a primer of lapping. We have a part here that we're going to measure first. We're going to show what the size is. And we don't want to take off more than a couple of tenths at the most. So we're going to use a very fine lapping compound. In this case, we're going to use 1200. So let's go measure this. So now we know <clears throat> that it's about a tenth and a half bigger on both ends, and it's a little smaller in the middle. So we're not gonna take off very much. So in chucking it up, I like to chuck it out on the end, so if there's a little run out, and really the run out doesn't make any difference, but it just bothers me. So you can see there's a little run out there. There we go, pretty true. So I'm going to take a little bit of 1200 and I'm going to put it on both ends. Remember when you put it on, it's going to wipe it off. <coughs> It'll move it all to one side. Excuse my cough. So now I need to put some on this end. Because remember I pushed it down to the other end. Don't need a lot of speed. Back and forth, nice and easy. <clears throat> Remember, we're, we're running at a low RPM. 
I can feel it where it's heavy here and it's not there. So again, we're just taking off ever so little. The black that you see here is coming from the lap itself and a little bit from the part. So we'll take a look at that. We'll wipe it off, see what it looks like. I like to wipe it down with Kleenex or tissue. You can use a towel if you choose, but this is my favorite way of doing it. Well, we can speed it up a little bit, and if we do, we'll get a little better finish. Remember, the run out doesn't mean anything. So I can see that we're starting to take off. You see the difference in the texture, Jim? I don't know if you can pick it up between ear and ear, but there is a bit of a difference. So we are starting to remove a little bit of material. All right, so we're going to make a little adjustment, crank it in just a little bit. There, I can feel it now. It's a little snug. And again, I'm going to put a little more compound on, on each end. I can feel a little bit of wobbling, which tells me that the part's out of round just slightly. It's not going to take much. Remember, we're probably talking... We're probably talking millions. You know, when you're taking off a couple of tents with a lap, it's really nothing. And again, we're using a very fine compound. We're using, I think it was 1200. Exactly. There you go. And I'd like to go back and forth. It's nothing more than sandpaper, like 1200 sandpaper. Remember, this is a, a method of stock removal. So the first would be machining, would be the first step. Next would be grinding. Last would be lapping. And then when I pull it off, I like to go fast. That way it doesn't hang up on me. So we'll wipe it down and see what we've got. I can pretty much tell by looking at it because the finish will be different. That's a beautiful finish. So most of the grind marks have gone away. And what I'm going to do now is give it one more shot. And then we'll give it a measure. See what it looks like. So I'll put a little compound on there. There we go. Be a little stubborn. Remember, when you put the compound on, you're wiping it at the other end. So you need to put some compound on this end as well. We'll put a little more on there. And again, the black that you see is partially some of the lap itself is sacrificial for the part. Lapping is not really that difficult, but you need to understand the cleanliness. You can't contaminate one compound with another. If you have 1200, you have to make sure that you clean the lap out if there's anything coarser in there than the 1200. So I kind of like what we've got right here. One more pass. I can, and you can feel it. When there's an out of round condition or there's a size different in the middle or at the end, you can really feel that. And when we measure it, I'll show you what I'm talking about exactly. And I like to turn the lap around sometimes. So we'll give it a wipe and let's see what we've got. I think we're ready to measure, Jim. And there's probably going to be some compound in the screw holes, but for what we're doing, it isn't going to make any difference. You know, I don't like using a rag because a rag could get caught in the chuck and that's not a good condition. If the Kleenex gets caught in there or the tissue gets caught in there, it ain't going to make any difference, right Jim? But a rag could, could, uh, could be dangerous. So I don't like to use a rag for that. Look at that finish on there. It's like chrome, isn't it? Isn't that beautiful? 
just like a mirror. I love lapping. And again, we took hardly, I don't think we took anything off to speak of, but we'll take it over to the comparator and we'll give it a shot and take a look at it and see what it looks like. But I'll bet you we didn't take off more than, more than a couple of tenths. Because if grind finish on there was pretty good. Now if the grind finish were coarse, you'd have to use probably a different compound up front and then uh, finish it with a fine compound. But the finish on here was pretty darn good. Look at that. Is that cool? That's a beauty, isn't it? All right, so we'll take it over and we'll check it out with the gauge box. I'm gonna lap it just a little bit more. Look at that, it's a tenth. It's on size there. there. And it's a tenth bigger. I'm gonna lap it again. You'll notice that Kleenex is good for something else besides blowing your nose. Now what I like about this finish is that there's no contaminants in there, i.e. no chips in there, something that were left a swirl mark from uh, dirt or dust that was in the air. It's pretty darn clean. So you don't see any scratches. It's a Got the same finish all the way through. So we'll give it a check. So I love this finish, it's almost black. It's beautiful, if you look at this end, which is a ground finish, and this side, which is lap, a big difference, and we didn't take much off, we took a couple of tenths, that's it. So let's check it for to make sure. There we are right on size exactly. In the middle, we're about 50 millionths under. And at this end, we're about 25 millionths over. So that's within 75 millionths or less than a tenth of size. So remember, all we used was 1,200, and it's a beautiful part. And what did it take? It took maybe 10 minutes, 15 minutes to do it. So if you really need to bring it within a, a, a tenth or two or under, that's the way to do it, using a lap. Using this type of a lap is a helical lap. And you can see it's got a spiral all the way through it. So when you tighten on the, on the holder, it collapses it evenly all the way around. Instead of having one slot, I never like the one slot. They, they tend to be a little egg shaped. So this comes out, put a new one in when they wear out. Uh, in the meantime, you just continue to tighten it till you get it down to the size that you want. So this, in my view, is the best lap to use. I have used them for years and will continue to use them here at Suburban Tool. So next, we're going to do an ID. All right, so we're going to do the ID of this bushing. The objective is to mate it with this part. So we've only got a few tents to take off. So again, we're gonna stay with a 1200 lapping compound, which we feel will be more than adequate. So again, be careful, do not use rags around the machine. I happen to have a little screw here with an arbor on it that gives me the ability to have some leverage. So I'm gonna slip that on nice and easy, turn the machine on, and I'm gonna take some 1200 and just touch it up. Remember, we're only taking off a few tenths. We're not taking much off. It doesn't take much. Remember, you're, 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 all you're doing is you're getting rid of the grind marks inside the hole. So it's, you're taking very, very little stock off, a couple of tenths at the most. So what I'm gonna do now is pop it off. I'll clean it out with a brush.
So I clean it out with a little mineral spirits. I like to make sure that we get all the residue out of there. Remember, there's a good opportunity for lapping compound to get inside the threads of the screws, and that's not good. So I'm pretty comfortable that we've got a pretty good looking part there. We'll see how it fares on, on the mate. Oh yeah. That's what I call a slip fit. Not too loose, not too tight. Beautiful slip fit. So that's all there is to lapping on, uh, lapping an ID. And remember, this is, this is an expandable lap. So you can tap on it as it wears and it'll, it'll expand. So as your part expands, your lap will expand. You keep putting a little compound on front, rear, go back and forth a few times take it off and check it and if you've got a slip fit like that that's what you're trying to do so in the event that you want to lap larger parts of course you can get larger laps that's pretty elementary there's a point of no return where you don't want to get too big uh, I don't like lapping beyond say an inch and a half but that's me some guys will lap bigger than that uh, using an arbor with an expandable lap that's about maximum Anyway, for more information, take a look at our website. You'll find our website at uh, subtool.com and uh, check out our other videos. Remember, we had a primer on lapping uh, prior to this one, so take a look at that one as well, and thanks for watching.